Hey everybody, this is Brian Gardner, Principal Developer Advocate at WP Engine. But today I'm gonna to wear a different hat. I'm gonna wear the hat of designer. Now today's video is gonna be really awesome because I'm gonna show you how to design your WordPress website in the browser, in the site editor, using no code at all. Let's get started. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you three specific parts of a design that can be controlled in the back end of WordPress using no code. The first one is going to be web fonts. Now, this is a really big one because uh, right now as it stands, there's really no easy way, maybe without the use of a plugin or a lot of custom code or FTP and file saving and stuff like that, uh, to change fonts in a website, unless a theme packages a bunch of fonts, which isn't also ideal. So new to WordPress 6.5, which should be coming here in a few weeks uh, as we roll into March, uh, is what's called the font library. And there's a management tool inside the back end of WordPress that allows you to do just that. What we're looking at here is the Frost homepage out of the box using the Frost WordPress theme. And I'm gonna go into the dashboard. Again, I am running WordPress 6.5 beta two in this video, just so I can demonstrate this. Uh, so if you go into the appearance and editor, the site editor, what we want to do is kind of go into the styles section. Now, as you can see here on the right-hand side, there is a link called typography. And by default, you see the three fonts that are packaged with the Frost theme. You've got Outfit, which is a Google font. You've got the System font stack, and then Monospace, which is used for code blocks and so on. Right here is a little icon called Manage Fonts. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If you click that icon, you're now brought to an interface which allows you to do a couple of things. View the fonts that are already part of your activated theme experience, uh, install fonts, which you can see here, and then upload fonts. The install fonts, uh, instance Google fonts, uh, you can connect and access these fonts. So enter is a Google font. And so just watch how easily I'm able to go in and uh, activate interfont. So I've connected, I've, I've granted access to uh, Google to allow the access. And now in my library, you can see I've got the interfont from font weight 100 all the way to 900, which match up perfectly. Now, another method of adding fonts is the upload method. This happens to be uh, available for us as those who, who, you know, maybe you have a font crush on something that you've bought, you like a specific type foundry, uh, or there's a font out there, like in my case, Avenir, that you really like, so you can upload them. So what you do here is uh, simply just select all of the fonts and you're able to upload them. As you can see, fonts were installed successfully. Now, if I click on library and go back, uh, you can see Avenir Next World is also an available font. As you can see, it kind of gives a little bit of a preview of each font. And so these are the two main methods uh, without having to do any code to add fonts. You can connect to Google and just grab them directly or you can upload custom fonts. Now, here's where it gets even better. As you close out of here, uh, these fonts are now available here in your global styles, which means uh, if you are for whatever reason, not a fan of the outfit font, which comes with Frost, you can go in and on a global level, you can click text and you can now change it to uh, you see enter, which is what I connected to Google, and then Avenir. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select Avenir, and then I'm going to hit save, and you'll see what happens. This is uh, using the outfit font. I'm going to refresh the screen, and now everything is in Avenir. So this is a really easy way to go through and sort of take a theme out of the box, a free WordPress theme such as Frost, and make it your own. You can uh, change fonts uh, either at the very high global level uh, or if you d prefer not to do that, uh, I will go out of here and I'm going to go set it back to the default. Uh, you're able to do it on uh, lower levels. For instance, if you just want to change the headings, you can click on headings and select, uh, maybe in this case, you want to do enter. And so the, the bulk of your uh, design stays outfit, but all of your headings here uh, become the font that you choose. Now you can also do this on like an individual level on a per post or a per page basis where you can go in and just uh, select a font like in a paragraph to a certain thing. But in most cases, people want to just ch uh, change it across the board. So like I've done before, uh, you can go in and select Avenir and you have Avenir throughout the entire site. So 
Uh, what this does, just sort of a quick reference, uh, similar to the way uploads work with WordPress, uh, when you add fonts either through kind of the Google connection or if you upload fonts, adds them to the WP content slash fonts directory. Why this is important is that if you change your theme, these fonts still are available because it comes theme agnostic. So you're installing the fonts more in the WordPress fonts directory than you are actually to the theme. So if you install these fonts, and uh, even for instance, if Frost has an update, uh, you will not override anything because it's not being stored in the theme. So this is a really, really helpful uh, tool for uh, providing folks who want to design within the WordPress experience. Uh, in other words, no code. Now, the alternative is if you're a builder, you can take a theme, you can open up a theme JSON file, you can include fonts as part of the theme, uh, but that is not what this intent is for. This is a little bit more for the user of WordPress than the builder of WordPress. But nonetheless, this allows you to sort of update and quickly iterate on the design of your website uh, using no code in WordPress. All right, so next up on the customization via the site editor, in other words, WordPress design no code, uh, is going to be color. So I'm gonna go back into uh, the global styles here and uh, show you where we're at. So we click on global styles, we're back here, uh, and we can see the uh, color scheme that comes with Frost uh, is as we see it here. There's a couple of blues, a black, a white, a gray, uh, so there's two ways in which this can be customized. Uh, Frost comes with what's called preset styles. Uh, if you click on the browse styles here, you can see that there are eight different sort of color schemes. Uh, each one, uh, as I click through, you can watch them change. This really kind of gives like a, a user a quick access way to change colors if they like the exact colors that come with Frost. Many people uh, use them out of the box. They just kind of like them. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to change uh, the color palette inside of uh, the site editor. Uh, of course, in theme JSON, that's where these colors are set. So like as a developer, you could go into the theme JSON of the theme and specify the colors. Uh, but again, this video workshop in particular is going, going through how to do it in the site editor. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on colors and you can see here, this is the palette. Uh, I'm gonna go into the palette and then you could just click on this and uh, literally type in whatever hex code you want, and you can see it change on the left-hand side. Uh, so in this case, I'm just gonna kind of put in a few arbitrary hex codes, maybe, um, oops. Maybe I kind of want to go with like more of like a red uh, look in any instance where this primary uh, color is set uh, throughout the site in buttons and background colors and links and stuff like that, uh, you can do that. And so I've just gone ahead and uh, changed those uh, and then similarly, there's a gradient where you can kind of go in and change the gradients. And of course, uh, duotone filters for those who are using those to apply over images, you can also easily go in and set the colors uh, there. But for all intents and purposes, uh, changing the colors sort of at the global level uh, can happen here. Now, uh, another thing, and this kind of crosses over into the third thing I want to talk about, which is uh, being able to change the colors um, at a block level, but before we get there, there's a few more areas in which we can change colors globally. Uh, and so the palette itself can be customized as we've done, uh, but even inside of, um, at the global levels, may, body text, the background of the site, um, captions, buttons, and headings, as, as you see here. In order to change the color of the buttons here, you can see there's background. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and select that, and you can see that it changes there. Uh, and so anywhere a button is used, you can kind of control the color. Uh, and maybe for whatever reason, you've got a palette set, but you want to make this color something totally different. You can still do that, keeping sort of the integrity of the uh, original color palette as well. And so uh, even that, you know, headings, if you wanted to just make all headings across the site, uh, maybe there's for whatever reason, there's a design choice you wanted to make them uh, one of the colors, you could do that. And so anytime a, a header or heading is used, you can uh, incorporate this change site-wide. And of course, uh, similar to some of the other things we talked about like font, uh, you can go into the post and page editors and customize uh, every individual instance as well. Uh, this right here is just really kind of controlling it at the high level, uh, also known as global styles. 
Now, the last thing I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, clear out all of the style stuff that we've done so far. Uh, and the last part is uh, the ability down here to change the design from a block level, uh, globally from the block level. So like anytime a specific block is used globally, uh, you can update the way that looks. And so if you click on here, you can see this is a list of all of the WordPress blocks uh, and each of them can be customized uh, as you see fit. So I'll scroll back up and kind of find some of like the main ones. So like, again, heading, this is just another place where we can change um, the color of the heading across the site uh, as well. Uh, and as we, you know, kind of click through some of these, maybe like the, you know, the quote that is um, styled by the Frost theme, maybe you want to do it a little bit differently. And so maybe, for instance, you want to add a background color to all of them. Um, maybe the text you want to use like a navy blue and so on. And so you're able to change um, colors and even type if you wanted to, you know, I selected the system font and it changes it here. And so when you hit save, what it does is it takes all of the changes that we do here in Global Styles, saves them to the database. And then when a theme perhaps gets an update, you don't overwrite your changes because they're saved in the database. It's kind of like a temporary child theme in a sense. Uh, where, for instance, if Frost itself has an update, uh, you can safely uh, accept that update because all of the customizations you've done here in the editor uh, are safe from those um, those updates. And so being able to just kind of go through and customize things, um, I'll even uh, just kind of walk over back into the global style, the colors. Uh, and maybe for some reason, uh, this there's no use of black in in the sense. Uh, and so maybe we do do something like this and then you can start to see um, all the areas where there was black and this covers everything because this is sort of a CSS variable. Um, probably not necessarily um, likely that you would want to make everything a blue, but for some reason, maybe you have like a, a darker sort of shade of blue you might want to use like this, kind of like a navy. So you don't want true black uh, across your entire site. You want to just like hint it with like maybe your accent color. Uh, and so this is a, a kind of a way to do that as well. And so you can see every instance where there would be uh, that primary, or excuse me, the contrast color that's selected uh, changes colors as well. So there's a lot here in the WordPress site editor uh, in terms of uh, customizing and designing sort of without using code. Uh, again, all of the things that are accessible in the site editor, all of the settings and the options and inputs and stuff like that, basically are defined by code inside of theme JSON, but from a developer level or a builder level, that's what it's meant for. Uh, but I think where WordPress is going sort of to compete with the Squarespace and Wixes of the world where users can go in and do things for themselves, um, change layouts and colors and fonts and really make it their own. That's the heart of where uh, WordPress is going in this sort of no code movement. Uh, and so these are just a few ways with a little bit more time and a little bit more creativity. You could very easily uh, take something out of the box like Frost and purely make it your own. And then the beauty is uh, what I didn't mention yet, but I'll do now is uh, there is a, and I'll put a link to this in the YouTube video. Uh, there's a plugin called Create Block Theme. So you could, for instance, install Frost, make a slew of changes, add different fonts, add different colors. Um, do all kinds of things, change, you know, heading to different fonts and different sizes and colors and stuff like that. Uh, and then you can, um, in one click, export it into a brand new theme. So for instance, if you were developing locally on local, you wanted to kind of design it and play with it and then do an export, it packages it all up. You could rename it whatever you want to, my theme or whatever. It takes all of the changes. And in that case, it writes it into the theme. So it sort of serves as the source of truth you could take that theme and install it somewhere else uh, and then have those changes immediately available. You don't have to go back into all of these settings and change them. So uh, there's a lot here to digest. Uh, WordPress is still evolving. A lot of the, the styles and settings have sort of landed in their place. Um, maybe from time to time on a theme update, we see a little bit of a UI change here or there uh, just based on usability testing. Uh, but the reality is um, and we're starting to see it now, probably more than we've ever, is the ability to have a very basic, simple theme in which you could design almost anything. So that being said, still excited about the direction of WordPress, where it's going. Uh, love advocating for the site and block editor and uh, a champion of 
uh, everything that we're seeing now come to us. Thanks again for watching the video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel uh, as we have more content coming out around the future of WordPress and hope you have a great day.